Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of UA Eats. I'm UA, and I am in Midtown Manhattan. And once again, I am craving steak. And I walked by a steakhouse the other day that looks really, really interesting. Well, I'm not sure if it's a steak house, but it is a nice fine dining restaurant that does offer steak. I'm talking about the Press Club Grill, a relatively newcomer to the fancy steak scene here in New York City. Now the Press Club Grill was opened a little less than a year ago, like about six months ago, and it's just a block away from the Empire State Building. It's basically between the Empire State Building, like that Herald Square area, and K-Town, Koreatown that is. And it was opened by a former contestant on, I believe, Top Chef. I hear this is a great restaurant and one of the better steakhouses in the city, if not one of the best steakhouses in the city right now. Specifically, I stumbled across an Eater article that was ranking all the best steakhouses in New York City right now. And you know, all your standard names were on there. Gallagher's, Keen's, St. Anselm's. But it did list the Press Club Grill, which I found really interesting. I really, really want to check it out because that's pretty impressive if a restaurant that's like six months old is already being mentioned among all those other giants, especially since the restaurant is also not just known for great food, but it's known for capturing that 1950s, 60s New York style, like that Mad Men New York style, if you know what I mean. So I'm hungry for steak, so let's check this newcomer out, why don't we? Okay, so we are seated now at the Press Club Grill and pretty cool restaurant on the inside. I requested a seat more by the window because, you know, I want more of a white lighting as opposed to over there where it's more like yellow lighting. But if you take a look at the atmosphere, kind of like I said, it definitely has that 1950s, 1960s, you know, that Mad Men portrayal of New York from that era. Now, from the minute you step in here, you feel like you're being treated to a fancy experience. Like even this menu, this is like a alligator skin menu or something like that. Very cool. So this is the wine list. I do not drink, but just going to briefly show you guys their wine selections. It looks like these are champagnes. And then they have all sorts of imported wines, you know, from all those fancy European countries. France, but I think I also saw some Austrian wines as well, as well as Spanish and Italian. But we are here mostly to try some food, so let's take a look at the menu, why don't we? And it looks like the food menu is less fancy compared to the wine menu. You know, no alligator or dinosaur skin on this, but it's a nice disposable menu. Typical fancy appetizers such as, you know, your oysters, your tuna tartare, although some also look less fancy such as matzo ball soup and buffalo wings, but carrots? <laughs> Interesting. Then we got some salads here. The main courses all look pretty standard, almost like your New York deli foods in a way. Like look, they got Rubens, they got burgers. The mains are not looking quite that fancy. They have a steak selection here and I gotta say the steaks are looking pretty reasonably priced. I'm gonna presume these don't come with fries, but 34 bucks for a top sirloin steak. I guess 10 ounces is a little small, but you know, that's that's not bad as far as New York goes. Especially considering the location where we are. This is like Tourist Central, maybe the most touristy spot in New York besides Times Square. So pretty impressive price. Hanger steak frites. I love hanger steak and I love steak frites. 39 bucks, not quite as cheap as Lentricote, another solid option here, but not a bad price. 40 bucks for steak frites. You know, interestingly, I almost thought that the steak frites would be more expensive than the filet mignon and that one doesn't even come with fries. But I guess hanger steak is cheaper than filet mignon and New York strip. 
And then they have some other sides. And desserts look really interesting. What I really, really have my eye on is the sticky toffee pudding, which I fell in love with ever since I had it. So I really, really got to try their take on this. But you know, it's interesting. I was expecting... I thought one thing that I heard about this place is I thought they had a beef wellington here. Let's order. I think I know what I want. I think I want to go with the steak frites. And then later, let's also try one of the sticky toffee puddings. I am ready. Um, so I'm going to go with the hanger steak frites. What temperature? Uh, medium rare. Question, do you guys have beef wellington here? Yeah, but that's for dinner. Oh, that's for dinner. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't commonly find beef wellington served in the U.S. in general. Even in New York, it can be hard to find. Like, even at British restaurants, sometimes it's even seasonal. So maybe we can come back later and just get some footage and try it out. While we wait, though, just want to show you, I'll be drinking out of this cool glass. I mean, look at this color. It looks like a glass out of, like, Dune or Star Wars or something. All right, guys, our steak frites just arrived. Let me show you real quick. Now it comes with a pretty generous golden tower of fries, it looks like. And uh, yeah, this is the hanger steak cooked hopefully medium rare with some, I believe those are romaine lettuces. I think those are like tiny heads of lettuce, I believe. And that in the middle is some sort of root vegetable, like a charred root vegetable. And this is the sliced hanger steak. And it's actually looking like a pretty large portion. I mean, they said eight ounces. I thought it was gonna be much smaller than this. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but this looks bigger than eight ounces to me. Don't want the food to get cold, of course. So let's dig in, why don't we? Look at that. <laughs> This napkin is held in like a one ring to rule them all. Although this looks like the one ring before it was shrunk down to a sealed door size. Like this looks like the one ring still fitted to Sauron's finger. And just look at this fancy handle for this steak knife. I'm showing my nerdy side now. I said that that looked like the ring from Lord of the Rings. Now I feel like this kind of looks like the dagger from Game of Thrones. You know, the one that Arya used. All right, I asked for medium rare. Uh, that looks a little bit more rare than medium, if you ask me, but that's okay. I don't mind. The stick kind of moves around a lot when you cut it. Like, it doesn't cut quite cleanly in half, but... We finally managed to cut it in half and separate this guy, and it is a very, very soft steak. As you can see, the main issue is that it's a little on the rare end. Hmm. Okay, so the main thing is that it is underdone. Like, I'm all for rare steaks. Like, I don't necessarily mind it being more rare than medium rare. Like, you know, I can take it. But to me, this is just really underdone, I think. Like, this isn't just rare. This is almost, like, pretty much raw. I mean, just look. That meat in the middle looks like it's, you know, straight from the meat section of the grocery store. Like, the temperature on the inside is just flat out not cooked. As Gordon Ramsay would say, it's still mooing. I mean, there's rare, and then there's just completely raw on the inside. And the meat, I gotta say, does taste decent. But unfortunately, the cook is just, you know, not really great, I would say. In fact, uh, I think I'm gonna do something that I've never done before on this channel. Uh, you know, it pains me to do this, but I'm gonna actually ask if they can cook that a little bit more, since to me, that's just way too underdone. So one second. Uh, yeah, so would I be able to get to medium instead? Like, it's pretty... Yeah, it's very rare, yeah, thank you. Thanks. In the meanwhile, though, let's review the fries, why don't we? The fries look promising. You know, these are some delicious looking golden fries served in a golden, like, goblet, it looks like. So, let's give it a try. Hmm. Okay, the fries do taste good. They're very crispy. They are a bit powdery on the inside, so they look really nice. I'm gonna break one open. Like, I like that they still have the skin on them. If I break them open on the inside, nice potato starch on the inside, although, like I said, it's a little on the powdery end. 
like when I squeeze it like that, as you can see, they're, they're quite powdery. When you eat them, it does taste a bit chalky, but the crunchy texture is pleasant at least. Not bad, not great, but they're okay, you know? So these will tide me over until I get my steak back. Yeah, no worries. Okay, thank you. All right, so I'm not gonna pick it up this time because the plate's hot, but... Okay, let's take a look. All right, that looks a little bit more what I had in mind. Uh, still very rare, but at least it's not like just completely raw on the inside. It's not like literally like they just seared the outside and left the inside the same as if we just got it from the butcher store. But now, let's try our slightly more cooked steak frites, why don't we? The meat looks super tender and super soft, as you know, hanger steak tends to be a more soft cut. Like it looks really tender, but I would say it's not quite as tender as it appears to be. I wouldn't go so far as to say this is like a tough steak, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely not as soft as I was hoping, especially from like a hanger steak. Now, if you want a good hanger steak, really soft and tender, great marbled flavor. I highly recommend St. Anselm's. They, one of the best hanger steaks I've ever had. This one's not bad. I mean, it definitely, you know, looks good, but I would say that the texture, unfortunately, is a bit tough. And it's a shame because the flavor of the meat actually is quite good. There's some steak sauce though, so let's see how it goes with this steak sauce. Or I think it might be like gravy or something. All right bite with the gravy. Mm. Yeah, it's more so gravy than steak sauce. But let me show you up close. The gravy is really good. I think this is like a chicken-based gravy. Now, another great steak frites restaurant, Lentrico, has a killer gravy that they pair with their steak frites, which they say the secret is chicken liver. This sort of tastes similar to that, only it's a little bit more watery. It's less rich and buttery than the Lentrico steak sauce. It's good, just not as good as that one, but probably not fair to make that comparison. But I guess I just feel like, yes, the steak sauce may be good, but a good steak really should be able to stay on its own without being reliant on the sauce. I mean, any restaurant really, like you want the protein alone to taste good and the sauce should magnify it as opposed to the protein is just like a sponge or a canvas for the sauce. Let's try one of these grilled lettuces, why don't we? All right, pretty fresh looking lettuce if I do say so myself. Actually, those are pretty good. The inside is filled with dressing. The inside is filled with a balsamic vinaigrette. So when you take a bite, you know how I said sponge earlier about these steaks and the sauce? That was more a metaphor. This is like a literal sponge. These lettuces soak up that balsamic vinaigrette dressing. And with all the layers of lettuce, it's like the dressing goes through all the layers of lettuce. So it kind of creates like a sponge effect, if you know what I mean. And it tastes great. It tastes really, really good. Now that the uh, steak is better cooked, everything is now certainly edible for sure. We're gonna eat some of this and then let's order some dessert because sticky toffee pudding, I cannot say no to. Can I get a box for the fries? And can I also do a sticky toffee pudding? Thank you. Thank you. This is sticky toffee pudding and it does not look like any sticky toffee pudding I've had before. I mean, just take a look at this dish. Most uh, sticky toffee puddings I've had have been more square. You know, square with a scoop of ice cream adjacent to it. I've never quite seen one like this. Like it's round and it has like a, what is that? Like an edible pretty honeycomb or something on top. Kind of looks like a bunch of meatballs with mashed potatoes in the middle as opposed to like a delicious dessert. But let's give it a chance. It's the flavor that counts more than the appearance. First, let's try a bite of this just on its own. And by all appearances, it's looking pretty delicious and moist on the inside. Good, but to be honest, I don't really taste much more than caramel. I mean, the caramel sauce is quite strong here.
it's good, but I find it rather sweet. Like I find that it does kind of have more of like a syrupy taste, less balanced for my taste. And also, I also find like the round shapes kind of strange. Like it's not really pleasing aesthetically. I don't know, somehow like eating a round dessert, uh, I don't know, maybe this is just a nitpick, but I think if it were square, it would look a little bit more appetizing. Let's try a bite of the ice cream, why don't we? Oh, yo, the ice cream's pretty good. Ooh, it's got great flavor and it's the perfect texture. I don't know where they're buying this ice cream or if they're making it in-house, but it's delicious. It's just a perfect texture. It's got a creamy flavor. It's neither too icicly nor is it too soft. But sticky toffee pudding needs to be eaten together. So a scoop of this and a scoop of this. Why don't we? Let's see if we can't eat this together. All right, one bite together. Mmm. You know, when you eat them together, the whole thing works. The ice cream is just fantastic on its own already. I could just eat pint and pint of this nonstop if I wanted. Uh, originally, I said that the sticky toffee pudding itself was a little bit on the sweet end, a little bit sticky and caramelly. But when you eat it together with the ice cream, like, it just balances it out perfectly. That's the only way to eat this, and as long as you're eating everything together, great dessert. Appearances aside. It's kind of cool that they offer this. I mean, I think offering these like kind of like British foods like sticky toffee pudding and the beef wellington which we wanted to get on the menu. I think that also is representative of the bygone era that this restaurant is supposed to represent. Like that Mad Men era, you know, like that 1960s New York when British food was all the rage. They only offer that beef wellington in the evening, but let's see if we can't come back later and try it because I feel like it wouldn't be complete without it, right? So be right back. All right, guys, so two days ago we ate at the Press Club Grill and we're back because I feel like I really, really want to try the Beef Wellington. That's really a dish that's from this era, like that 1960s Mad Men era of New York. And honestly, even aside from trying that dish from the dinner menu, I'm kind of glad I came back because this place really is a different atmosphere. At nighttime, it really is a completely different vibe. So still not super crowded because I am here early again. Like I'm here at six around opening time. But at nighttime, it definitely has a different vibe. The yellow lighting really, really works at nighttime. Really, really, really cool atmosphere. Like during the daytime, the yellow lighting is a little bit off-putting. Like it feels like it's contrasting with, you know, the natural daytime lighting. But it really, really works well at nighttime. You feel like you're in like Mad Men or, you know, you're in like the 1960s. I'll just pretend I'm Don Draper about to wine and dine some big ad execs. I hear really good things about this Beef Wellington. Let's give it a try, see how it is. Not very commonly offered. And if people rave about it, you know I gotta try it. The things I do for you guys to do comprehensive reviews and make good content, 120 bucks and it's for two. So I guess I'll have to try to think of it as 60 bucks per meal, but I basically locked myself into eating two $60 dinners. So let's order and see how it is. Uh, question, the uh, beef Wellington, do you have a single serving of that? Only two? Okay, uh, I'm still gonna get it and I'll just take the rest to go. This comes medium rare, are you okay with that? Yeah, that's perfect. And it takes like 35 minutes to cook. Are you willing to wait? Yep, yeah, that's cool. Totally worth it. So that's gonna be sliced? Yep. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Wow, that's cool that they give you like a display of what it looks like pre-sliced. It does look better than the one I had at Gordon Ramsay's restaurant, that's for sure. Let's see if it tastes better. Oh, excellent, thank you. All right, guys, uh, the plate is pretty hot, so I'm not gonna pick it up, but um, the beef Wellington is here. Oh, and by the way, the reason why I have glasses on now is because I got bored while waiting, so, so I put my glasses on to use my phone. So this is the famous beef Wellington here at the Press Club Grill, and now this is a portion for two people, but I don't know, I feel like I could crush this by myself. <laughs> so I don't know, 120 bucks for just two people to eat this? Like, just two pieces? per person. Now keep in mind that beef wellington is pretty filling because the puff pastry as well as the pretty large piece of 
steak in the middle, prosciutto lining the inside, and the duxel mushroom sauce. It's more filling than it looks like, but still, 120 bucks for this, it's a little steep. I feel like half that, 60 bucks for this whole thing might be more fair, but it's looking like a beautiful medium rare. Love that glisten that it's getting. This looks kind of like next level if you ask me, so. Wow, the filet mignon comes apart so easily. The only problem though is beef wellingtons are kind of hard to pick up. You know, they're kind of like an awkwardly shaped food. I wonder if that's why they fell out of fashion after the 1960s. All right, beef wellington. Let's try another bite. Let's get some of these uh, puff pastries and prosciutto and stack it, why don't we? And let's try a second bite. It's good. I mean, it's filet mignon, puff pastry, prosciutto, mushroom duxel. It's not gonna taste bad, you know? The meat is really tender, the filet mignon is good quality. Everything more or less tastes pretty good, but I gotta say, I don't know if this is a $120 caliber dish. I mean, it just tastes like a bunch of nice things thrown together, you know? Like a filet mignon, a mushroom duxel, a puff pastry, and prosciutto. Like, those are all great ingredients, but it kind of just tastes like, like a sandwich of all those things combined. I mean, everything is good, but it doesn't really seem like everything complements each other. Like, everything is just good on its own, and then you eat it together, and it's still good, you know? Okay, let's try some of this duck cell, why don't we? Maybe that's part of it. The duck cell is not really that great. So I've made beef wellington before, and to be honest, this duck cell paste, this duck cell paste needs to be really dry. Like, you really, really gotta cook this down until you get like pretty much as much water out of it as possible. While this mushroom duck cell sauce is still kind of wet, therefore the mushroom flavor is not really that strong. Let's try the prosciutto, or as the Brits call it, parma ham. The prosciutto is also not salty enough. If anything, this prosciutto kind of just tastes like ham. You really, really need to use a good quality prosciutto for this to work. And this puff pastry too, it may look pretty. It may have some fancy scoring and some fancy designs, but unfortunately, this puff pastry, it needs to be more buttery, it needs to be more rich. So let's try one thing though. Let's see if this sauce they gave us pairs well with this. Let's see if it helps, why don't we? Let's give this a whirl with the sauce. The sauce is very good. The sauce almost tastes like a beef bourguignon. Like with this sauce, you feel like you're eating like a, you know, like a French beef stew or something. But it's very strong, you know? It has like that beef bourguignon flavor, like a really strong red wine flavor, like a strong beef, like a strong braised beef flavor. And to be honest, like for a beef wellington, I want to eat like a British beef wellington dish. I don't want to eat like a beef bourguignon. Like I want to eat a filet mignon wrapped in prosciutto and mushroom duck cell and puff pastry. I want to be able to taste the steak along with all its accompaniments. But you cover it in this beef bourguignon sauce and now you pretty much get like a completely new dish and it kind of masks all the flavors and you know like beef bourguignon is great but but as much as I love beef bourguignon, beef bourguignon is like 20 bucks, maybe 25 bucks if you're getting ripped off in New York at a French restaurant. Like I don't spend 60 bucks for beef bourguignon, I spend 60 bucks for beef wellington but once you put the sauce on all you taste is the beef stew flavor. We are going to eat more of this and then we're gonna share our final thoughts outside. Anyways guys, we just finished eating at the Press Club Grill and uh, I, uh, I wanted to like it, I did. I even gave it two chances. I felt like it wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. Like it was a fancy vibe on the inside and service was pretty good, particularly the dinner service. It was a fun restaurant to eat at for the atmosphere, 
but for the food itself, Eater really hyped this place up, but unfortunately, I gotta say that the Press Club Grill, for me, not worth the hype. Very cool Mad Men-like vibe and atmosphere, but for the food, I think you can do better. It doesn't really sniff anywhere near the top steakhouses of New York that it was mentioned alongside with. But anyways, guys, I think that's gonna be it for this video. Have you guys eaten at the Mad Men style press club grill before? If you've eaten there, what did you think? Do you agree with my assessment or do you disagree? Let me know in the comments because great minds eat alike. If you like my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. That way you stay up to date whenever I post another video. Now, I wound up eating half of that beef Wellington and I said that I could take the whole thing in one sitting, but it turns out that half of that beef Wellington is uh, it's still quite a bit of food. So I'm gonna go walk off dinner. So until next time, I'll see you later.